Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, I'm working on this interesting binomial integral, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from negative infinity to infinity. Then we have this binomial nx, and then we have dx. So this is pretty interesting binomial integral. And what I'm going to do first is I'll be representing this integral using gamma function. So what you're working on has to be the same as integral from negative infinity to infinity. And if you represent this integral using gamma function, gamma of n plus 1. Okay, that over now, gamma of x plus 1 times gamma of n plus 1 minus x. And we have, of course, dx. So that's why if you... Work this out, and it has to be n factorial times integral from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, then your integrand has to be simply just a 1 over um, x times gamma of x times gamma of n plus 1 minus x. Of course, we have dx after. Okay, so using this, we can talk about this gamma of n plus 1 minus x. So your gamma of n plus 1 minus x. Let's talk about this. So the expression of the gamma of n plus 1 minus x is going to be the same as n minus x times gamma of n minus x. Okay, so then it has to be the same as then n minus x times all the way up to 1 minus x. That times now gamma of this 1 minus x. Okay, now we need to think about this gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x. Okay, so the expression for the gamma of um, x times gamma of 1 minus x. This expression has to be, which is called as a refraction formula. So using the reflection formula, then this gamma x times gamma 1 minus x is the same as pi over sine pi x. Okay, so that is why we can represent this integral i n. So integral i n has to be this n factorial. Okay, that times integral from negative infinity to infinity. Then your integrand has to be the sine of pi x divided this by now pi x times this expression n minus x. Okay, that times all the way up to 1 minus x, and of course we have now then dx. Okay, so that's why this could be rewritten, right? This could be rewritten as now this whole thing. n factorial times alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of, now n. And then we have integral from negative infinity to infinity, sine of now pi x, which is in your numerator, and then denominator has to be the same with alternating signs. So pi x, that times now still this x minus n. Switch the sign of it, and then multiply all the way up to x minus 1. And then we have dx. Okay, then this is the time we need to work on partial fraction, right? So if you work on partial fraction, then your expression 1 over um, x times x minus n times all the way up to x minus 1. We can represent this as a over x. Plus the other terms, we can represent this in the use of the summation from k, let's say k is equal to 1 all the way up to n. And then we have b k over x minus k. Okay, so using this partial fraction, right? So we can set up, first of all, 1. Okay, 1 is equal to a times now x minus n. 
So that is why what we should be working on is now the x minus 1 now times x minus 1 plus summation um, k is from 1 of this bk. That times x minus n times all the way up to x minus k times all the way up to x minus 1. Okay, then we need to think about when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 1, and when x is equal to 2, those three cases. So let's start with when your x is equal to 0. So when your x is equal to 0, then your 1 is equal to a times alternating sign negative 1 to the power of n. Okay, that times n factorial. Okay, second, when your x is equal to now 1. When your x is equal to 1, then we have 1 is equal to b1 uh, times 1 minus n and uh, times all the way up to 1 minus 2. Okay, so number 3, when your x is equal to 2. x is equal to 2, then your 1 is equal to now b of 2. That times 2 times parenthesis of 2 minus n times all the way up to um, 2 minus 3. That times 2 minus 1. Okay, then using all of this information, we can rewrite this i of n, right? So the i of n, this will be a little lengthy. Uh, this is now equal to this n factorial times negative 1 to the power of n, alternating sign part. Okay, that times integral from negative infinity to infinity of okay, sine pi x over pi. And then that times a. a over x plus the summation sign from k is equal to 1 to n. And then we have b of k over x minus k. Close your parenthesis, and of course we have now then dx. So that's why if you rewrite this everything, then it has to be the same as n factorial still times this alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of n, and then I'll be making this bracket. And then we have a times integral from negative infinity to infinity. And then your integrand has to be the sign pi of x over uh, pi x, and then we have dx. Plus, we have another term, plus now uh, the summation Summation from k is equal to 1 all the way up to n. And then we have bk. That times integral from negative infinity to infinity. And then your integrand seems like sine pi of x over now pi times x minus k. Okay, and then we have dx. Close your bracket. Okay, now let's talk about this integral from negative infinity to infinity sine of pi x over pi times x minus k dx from the previous work. Okay, so let's talk about this integral from negative infinity to infinity, like I said, sine of pi x okay, over um, pi times x minus k and then dx. I'll be making a substitution. So calling your y is equal to x minus k. Okay, then we can rewrite this integral using y. And then it would be a simplified one. So it is then going to be equal to integral from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, then we have sine parenthesis pi times okay, y plus k. That divided by pi y, and then we have dy. Okay, so that's why we can talk about a few things. So the sine of now pi times y plus k. This has to be the same as if you distribute sine of pi y plus pi k. And that is going to be then equal to a sine of pi y. That time Now cosine pi y times sine pi k. 
So which has to be the same as this alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of k. Okay, that times now sine pi y plus now 0. So that's why we can see all the integrals are equal to this integral from negative infinity to infinity sine now pi x over pi x now dx. And then that should be equal to 2 times integral from 0 to infinity. And then sine pi of x over pi x, then we have uh, dx. So making another substitution, I'll be calling this y at this time, this pi x, and then rewrite this integral using the y. Then your integral is the same as 2 over pi. 2 over pi from 0 to infinity, then your integrand has to be just a sine y over y. And then we have dy, which is the same as 2 over pi times pi over 2. And then you can cancel all of those terms out to have this is equal to now 1. Okay, so let's go back to this i of n, right? i of n was n factorial times negative 1 to the power of n. And then we have bracket... Uh, then we only have a plus now, summation from k is equal to 1 to n. And then we have negative 1 to the power of k of only the bk. If you now plug it in 1 to the k, right? So for your k is equal to 1, then we should have a times negative 1 to the power of n. That times n factorial. This is going to be just equal to 1, and that is the binomial n0. So that's why in this case, now your b1, b1 is the same as negative 1 to the power of n uh, minus 1. Okay, that over n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so that's why putting all of these together to represent this i n. Then what we need is, what we have is n factorial times negative 1 to the power of n. That times negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Then that times negative 1 to the power of just the 1. This has to be the same as n factorial over n minus 1 factorial which has to be the same as this binomial of n1. Then we need to find k is equal to 2, 3, and so on, all the way up to n, right? So that's why the final answer for this question is going to be this n factorial times negative 1 to the power of now k. That times b of k. This is the same as the binomial nk. So that is why this i of n. So i of n has to be the same as summation, your k is from 0 to n. And then we have binomial, the combination, n k. So this is just going to be equal to 2 to the power of n. So that's why the final answer for this question is 2 to the power of n for this binomial integral. So pretty interesting integral, so I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.